what's the age you started playing? Four. Five. Almost four. Nine. Twelve. <laughs> Uh, we have another question from Kim. Are there any performers that you really love to listen or to watch? Mm, many. Yeah. Sarah. You know, I've been recently uh, binging on the Brahms Violin Sonatas and been listening to a lot of Anne Sophie Wooter. Classic. Mm. Yeah, she's a real classic, really amazing. Yeah, if we're talking about violinists. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's no one better than Sonny or Danny. I mean, so. right. <laughs> um, yeah, lately, I've, some of the most amazing live concerts I've been to uh, have been like um, Leonidas Cavacos, maybe a hundred videos explaining a lot of different techniques in the violin. And like he talks about different aspects of making music on the violin. So um, yeah, he's, he's phenomenal. Uh, I have also been listening to Augustine Tadalich on the violin, um, as well as a lot of Hilary Hahn recordings um, and uh, cellists. Uh, Stephen Israel says Peter Whispelway is another cellist that's really, really amazing. Just like a really captivating sound. Um, and also, also the Danish string quartet. If you need any any violists, need any viola recommendations, I recommend you check out Lawrence Tower. If you don't know that name, he's a British viola soloist and he's just incredible. Can you define major point in your career as a musician that steered you the way you approach your instrument intellectually? Oh, oh very good question. Uh, Take it away, Lewis. Wow. <laughs> Can you define a singular point where it defined how you approach your instrument intellectually? Correct. I don't think I could define a single point, but I think there are a number of points that would define for all of us times where our fundamental approach to the instrument was probably changed intellectually. And that sometimes happens uh, during a master class. That can happen sometimes when you're studying with a teacher that uh, is new. Sometimes that can happen when you're studying with a teacher that you've been with for a long time and you finally get what they've been trying to beat into your mind for the past three years. <laughs> And, and sometimes um, you can get that by, by attending a performance. So I think there are a lot of different ways that you get that information. And, and what's very important is that you're kind of open to receiving the information and experimenting and listening to different perspectives on the instrument that you're playing because there, there is no one single right way to do it. Um, there are a lot of people that are successful um, performing on these instruments, and some of them have got drastically different approaches, but the results are still success. So uh, in some ways, that might be the most, if you're asking for the single thing uh, that would lead to kind of an intellectual exploration and a new perspective of your instrument, it would be to seek out uh, different voices and decide for yourself what things you want to do and what paths you want to follow on the instrument. I was thinking the same thing about master classes. Like, I don't know if you guys have had many opportunities to attend or participate in master classes, but, um, you know, basically a, a, a teacher teaches students in front of an audience. And I actually remember learning so much from watching those when, when I wasn't actually playing, but when, when somebody else was playing and being taught in front of me, because for some reason, just when it's not you getting out of it and just being able to watch the process, I found really helpful. Yeah, I was thinking of some fantastic master classes that I attended just when I was in school and also at summer programs. I think those are great to take advantage of when you can. Thank you. 